Hello and welcome back to Real Horror Show. I'm your host Samantha, joined as always by the Swarmy Skies. Hello, listeners. Very dramatic pause. Yes, I said hello, listeners. Can you hear me okay, I guess? I can hear you. I heard okay. your phone go off. Yeah, sorry. Again. <laughs> it's my husband. Um, but I literally just finished watching a moment ago. The Vampire, Vampire Diaries. Diaries. <laughs> That's right. We finished a show on the podcast. Yeah. How long have we been watching this show? I don't know. I can't remember when it's we made the decision to do it. Yeah. But it's been a minute. It's been a long time. Yeah. It's been a really long time. And I'm glad that, you know, I, I really love the show overall. I'm glad we did take the time to watch it. I'm glad we're, we finished with it now. It was getting pretty long. Yeah. I feel like we're now part of a certain culture online, mm-hmm. the Vampire Diaries fandom. Yes. <laughs> um, unfortunately, we can no longer pretend to be the number one Vampire Diaries podcast. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> but we're about to become the number one originals podcast in the world. Yeah, original. So we'll do originals and then I guess uh, the legacies thing. Yeah. After Gosh. the originals, we that's have right. to do it. <laughs> legacies, which um, they kind of hinted at starting in the final episode of The Vampire Diaries, which we have yeah. watched. Yes, we watched it, and uh, I did notice that they did the that Salvatore boarding school thing, and I was like, oh, that must be the school Sam was telling me about, so they're going to make it happen, which, which is, is great. <laughs> which, not to get too ahead of ourselves, I thought that was interesting because yeah. Damon is still alive, so I guess he signed off on it, but they made it seem like they were doing it in Stefan's honor. Yeah, I, I want to talk to you about the ending, though. Um, because like, yeah, I know Damon's alive, but in the end, did they just show everybody like meeting their dead loved ones after they die? After- okay. So I did Google that <laughs> okay, afterwards. Thank you. I, got um, I think the ending is confusing and I meant to look up to see if they did it this way because legacies hadn't been immediately picked up. Yeah. But basically the end is just to show what happens after everyone lives their full lives they're reuniting with their loved ones but they're still that's yeah (laughs) everyone is still technically alive in legacies even though they don't make appearances yeah okay i did yeah i just was like i guess this is everybody dying and just like seeing the dead people that are die are dead (laughs) so that's that's good. I mean, at least they get reunited. So that's a happy ending. Yeah. No matter what. <laughs> but yeah, let's, um, before yeah. we break it down further, yeah, uh, our movie that we're going to review for next week is going to be the 2021 Netflix original, I believe, Till Death, starring Megan Fox. A woman finds herself shackled to her dead husband as part of a revenge plot. As the rest of the plan unfolds, a desperate battle for survival begins. Interesting. Um, and have you haven't watched this yet, have you? I have not, but I've heard good things about it. Okay. Um, and I immediately think of Gerald's game a little bit. Mm, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, the handcuffed thing, and she's handcuffed, but her husband's dead, and they're, they're not handcuffed together but it's still like a survival thing but I'm sure it will be quite different yeah I can I can see that yeah I'm looking at the some stills and stuff and it's like the it's like them in the bedroom she has like the lingerie you know and he's dead outside of the bed yeah very cool stuff well I really look forward to it I haven't really watched any Megan Fox like thriller movies like ever like other than Jennifer's body you know Mm -hmm. um so really cool stuff to to see that she's still out there doing like movie stuff um so I look forward to watching it yes contain yourself (laughs) sorry (laughs) it's Uh, okay my lunch took a little while getting here so I haven't eaten yet so my brain's kind of in a fog me and too. I didn't eat anything yet too. So I, I totally am on the same wavelength. I feel like. And I was just, <laughs> I was cleaning the kitchen because our kitchen counter, like everybody's kitchen counter gets cluttered with stuff. Yeah. And 
it's giving me anxiety because I don't have space to cook and I just need there to be a place for stuff, at least not on the kitchen counter. Like I can't claim that we're not cluttered everywhere else because it's spring and we need to do a Goodwill haul and people yeah. dumped their shit on me, even though we have a two bedroom apartment. Yeah. Anyway. That's a lot, um, yeah. I just want to become one of those TikTok bitches that has their <laughs> life together and everything is organized. Yeah. Um, and you know what? It's it's so hard to like get organized unless you have like a bunch of rooms. Mm-hmm. Like it's so hard. So I understand. Don't be too hard on yourself because you don't have a lot of space to like be perfectly organized like they are, even though you want to be. And it's it, you'll but you'll get there. Um yeah. So yeah, I, I feel your pain though with the cluttered and like not having a lot of counter space. I, I get it, I'm sorry. But at least we finished the Vampire Diaries and everyone died and went to heaven, right? <laughs> everyone thought yeah. they were like going to hell. Okay. Which yes. yeah, we can, we can get into it. So <laughs> did the other side come back at the end? Like was Bonnie able to create it again? Like, I really have no idea what actually is happening because I'm trying to keep track of the fact that there was no other side and then there was hell, but then there hell gets destroyed. So it's trying to wrap my mind around the fact that like these other dimensions can get destroyed when you destroy one person, but you have to keep track of when they're able to come back with magic. Mm-hmm. So I don't know, Sam, I really don't. <laughs> I guess it did. Right. And that's to. where... so season eight by far was so much better than season seven yes it was (laughs) there was a clear goal they were going toward at the end it wasn't just kind of throwing shit at the wall to see what sticks like season seven was yeah um we knew that elena was going to come back because they kept talking about figuring out how to bring elena back and Mm -hmm. she does come back at the end for the very last episode yes that's cool (laughs) she and Catherine. Catherine naturally is the final boss they have to defeat because she's going to burn uh, Mystic Falls in Hellfire. Of course she is, because why not? <laughs> and because oh, man. Yeah. Matt and his father ring the bell, it opened up a portal to hell, and Kai mm-hmm. came back, and then mm-hmm. uh, Matt's mom came back for some reason. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And Vicky came back. That one kind of makes sense because Vicky's been pissed about being dead since the day she died. Which was all the way back in season one. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Oh, God. So Vicky coming back to me makes total sense, kind of full circle for that character. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the mom coming back and just like, I died two years ago and you didn't (gasps) even fucking notice. (laughs) I know. She's like, yeah, I I guess no one told you I had a fall. And I was like, what the fuck? (laughs) whatever stupid anyway that was like one one yeah you probably didn't have matt written down as your like next of kin so they didn't know who to contact right right exactly so that was kind of like a a little strange thing but i was like whatever just whatever sometimes that stuff like that happens (laughs) but it was cool having kai back i liked kai yeah you know what despite the fact that he's supposed to be you know like an antagonist and stuff he does have this like personality which he nails so he um he's a very good actor and I feel like he uh did well with that character I agree Um, oh fucking Enzo died oh shit yeah so a lot of stuff happened guys We're, we're done with the sirens but the bell exists because the sirens wanted it but we didn't realize the other layer that like Satan was going to be something that we had to face and we get that and since Stefan and Damon work for Satan (laughs) they had to turn off their humanity and whenever Stefan turns off his humanity he becomes like a psycho murderer so he killed Enzo which I want to talk about Enzo's death let's talk about it yeah because I'm confused I swear to god they're constantly ripping out each other's hearts but it doesn't perma kill them yeah, I feel like the only time that someone dies from their heart being ripped out is like when Damon does it to a human person or another non-vampire, like supernatural creature. And you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I thought that the only thing that could kill it, well, yeah, that's a good, this is a good discussion to have because like they stab each other with the wood and that'll kill you. 
unless you take the wood out. You know what I mean? You have to burn the body, take the heart out, all these things. So I agree with you. That shouldn't have been like a final death. I yeah. feel like more should have happened. I feel like yeah. at this point, we know that the writers really didn't like the actress who played Bonnie for whatever fucking reason, probably racism. Yeah. They constantly like give Bonnie the end of a stick. I like what? there was zero reason to perma kill off Enzo except as a fuck you to Bonnie. I agree because actually in this season, all she does is deal with everybody else's problems, never her own. She's traumatized and depressed and upset, but yet she's like the best character because she does end up like saving the day. But like nobody gives a shit. She never gets what she wants and everybody else does. And like this season made that like very clear and upfront. I don't know if that was like on accident, but like, come on, like give yeah. this girl a break. Why the fuck would you kill Enzo? Yeah, don't you do didn't. That. Like one could argue uh, they killed them off so she could find her strength and realize that she still had her magic. Yeah. But I don't think she needed her boyfriend to die and be that kind of Deo Ex Machina because she realized she had magic when the twins were siphoning magic off of her. Yes, exactly. So she could um, find yeah. that strength without him being dead and just the need to protect Caroline's children. Right. Yes, yes, exactly. Um, and it's just, uh, um, she she deserves some type of happiness. She's she literally became like the only person in the friend group without like I'm saying this with air quotes without like a spouse. You yeah. know what I mean, or like a partner. But so what the heck? <laughs> Caroline ends up alone, but she did marry Stefan at the end, which. Yeah, and I can say that like she was also gonna marry Alaric, so she's always gonna have a support system. Yeah, and Klaus is just gonna wait for her to finish grieving Dude. Stefan, and then he's gonna swoop right in. <laughs> I know, right? I was like, what the fuck? So I was like, just be with Klaus, and then like, so C Caroline has everybody, mm -hmm. okay? Elena has the love of her life, uh, in, in the show at least, which is Damon. Uh, Matt doesn't need a girlfriend because you know, it's just Matt, but he has his father. So that's a support system that he never had before. Mm -hmm. uh, what else do we have? Uh, nobody, right? Is there someone I'm missing? I think so. I think you got everyone. Jeremy comes back. He gets a satisfying conclusion. He comes yeah. to be a teacher at the legacy school. He gets a job teaching these kids how to, you know, be like a vampire hunter. And that's great. So he has this support system too, because he has a Laric who like was kind of his father figure for a while in the early seasons mm -hmm. and then Caroline who watched him grow up so it's like a pseudo mom and dad situation here there's Bonnie have fucking I just <laughs> see no reason for the them to kill off Enzo because it wasn't like an actor conflict or anything because he's still in most of the episodes after his death yes Yes, literally. And, and I understand they were trying to make Stefan seem like this person who you could never forgive, but like kill somebody else. There's mm -hmm. so many people that he could have gone after or there's so many other things he could have done that didn't involve like murdering somebody else too. You know, I agree. <laughs> because of his history. You know, maybe he could have killed Matt. Like <gasps> I would have understood that because he's human. Yeah, like that, I feel like that would have, right? like Enzo ultimately only completely devastates Bonnie and to a certain extent, Damon. Like he was friends with everyone else, but it wasn't, he was a yeah. fairly new character still. He came in in like season six or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And so if you kill off Matt, who's been there since the beginning, mm -hmm. I think that would have been a lot more devastating as a viewer. Oh, that's such a good point. Yeah, that would have been a shocker because he then he could have done the same kill, removed the heart, and he would have just been fucking dead. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like legit. It, it wouldn't make me question it because I swear to God, someone ripped out Stefan's heart earlier in the season and he did oh, yeah. die. Right. So what, but, where's this like uh, cherry picking happening here with yeah. the kills? <laughs> oh, and it would have been so sad yeah. for Matt to die because he found his dad and he had a support system that he always wanted yeah. with since everybody in his fucking life keeps dying. Yeah. And yeah. then once he finds his dad, he's the one that gets killed. That would be yes. so sad. 
Yes, because, you know, like all his friends are vampires. So no matter what he does, he can never like identify with them anymore. Yeah. So he has his father back and then he would die. And that would have been like so freaking devastating. Also, like Matt still like maintained. I really loved Matt. I would have been so upset if he got killed. I agree. Like for some reason he gets a lot of hate in the fandom and I don't understand why. I guess, you know, he is a boring character and he did go through that phase in season Mm -hmm. seven where he hated everybody. Yeah. But again, I think his anger and hatred of these people is justified since the people he loves keep dying because of them. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And um, also, remember whenever he had that moment, well, I guess this moment wouldn't happen, um, but he came to Bonnie whenever Enzo died and he like shared how much he cared for her and stuff and about their friendship. Maybe Mm -hmm. that could have been redone prior to Enzo's death and then he would have died. So then Bonnie would have been equally as like kind of upset and traumatized because he just, you know, reconnected with her and was like, you know, like we're still good friends, you know, blah, 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 whatever. It could have been worked out. So that's actually a really good alternative death. And I would have been, I would have been okay with it. With Enzo, it's kind of like, uh, okay, you're literally just doing this to like say fuck you to Bonnie, like you said. Yeah. Just getting the shaft. Um, I think that was the biggest thing. Uh, Bonnie yeah. figures out she has psychic powers and that's what they use to defeat Cade and destroy hell yes that was a pretty cool moment um with all the witches of her you know family all the bennett witches Mm -hmm. alive and dead i guess she's the only one alive right yeah i thought that was a really great moment because one of the reasons she lost her magic was because she did something to piss off her ancestors is that why because i kind of like forgot and let yeah, that get so lost in the shuffle yeah it was earlier in the series when she saved someone I can't remember who it was but the Bennett witches didn't want her to save them and uh-huh. so they made an agreement and I think that's when she became the um portal to the other side oh I see and lost her magic right so okay, for gotcha. them to all come together in the end to close the portal of hell mm-hmm. was a very big moment and I wish the writers weren't such assholes to Bonnie and the actress who played Bonnie so her character could really thrive the way I want her to yeah because she's I think she's one of the best characters on the show absolutely I agree she's great and so I wish she got a spinoff because there aren't enough uh witch shows that aren't Sabrina yeah you're absolutely right she could have definitely gotten a spinoff also like she she is a great character she has so much um she might have more character development because of all the trauma she I think she deals with more shit than like any other character mm-hmm. who's not like Stefan I feel like Stefan dealt with a lot too because of his history but like still who's not Stefan she just like a really really rough life and, and she's not like every time she finds happiness it's quickly taken away from her I, yeah you know what I mean yeah was, who was she in love with before it was Enzo wasn't it Jeremy yeah I think Jeremy was the last big one there may have been someone in between them but yeah Jeremy was the one and I still don't get why they weren't endgame like and her relationship with Enzo was really great yeah but the way Jeremy loved her I don't know I feel like they yes. were a more ideal end game but because he left the show we probably couldn't get that natural ending right. with them yeah and that's what sucks about shows too is whenever these things happen and you can't predict when actors are going to leave these weird loose ends get tied up in awkward ways so the viewers have to question them yeah you know and I think I have read the showrunner say that had Nina not left the show and Elena was in season seven and all of season eight, yeah, she and Stefan would have probably been endgame. They would have found oh. their way back to each other. Oh my gosh. Which and then, that's that's what happens in the books is Damon right. and Bonnie are endgame, which makes yeah. total sense to me. 
even in the context of the show because they're best friends but like their friendship is so like deep and passionate Uh uh-huh that it could easily go the other way their chemistry is insane yeah we thought they were going to be together after they were stuck in that place together by themselves and um I'm actually surprised that that didn't become a thing because Stefan's still around, but all these weird connections were happening. Caroline could have easily been with Alaric instead, just because they have children to raise and they could have learned to be, be in love with each other with their parent or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh, it's just, you're right. That, that, that would have been great, but offset, you know, like these weird things happen with mm-hmm. the people in uh they don't want to be around each other they'll just leave and I, I think in the scenario where Elena didn't leave and we still had the same kind of storyline going in that scenario I do see Stefan still becoming human and then Damon being the one to sacrifice himself at the end yeah for sure so because he can be with Elena yeah and I think that would really make sense for Damon's overall character arc if he were the one to sacrifice himself because he started out as the villain of the series right because he's always like I'm so selfish I'm so selfish so it would be like a huge turning point to sacrifice himself and like 100% selfless Mm -hmm. action definitely as a but it um it didn't quite work out in all those ways but that's okay I guess yeah (laughs) Yeah, uh, it just I to me writing wise, it makes sense that Elena and Stefan had Elena had Nina not left the show, they would yeah. have been endgame because of the whole doppelganger thing. They're fated to be together. Oh, I wanted that to be so bad, and then like all everybody just like thought it. You know, they're just like she wants to be with Damon because he's so dashing, and I'm just like get out of here. Like it's definitely fate plus. They were in love first. Okay, mm-hmm. they were. They just, it, I don't know. So, you know, their time together was fine, her and Damon, but I agree there would have been a way that they would have found each other again. Yeah. And like out of all the people Caroline's dated, I feel like she and Stefan have the least amount of chemistry and they only ended up together just so Stefan would end up with somebody. I agree. They have no chemistry. I feel like Caroline had more chemistry with like weird Alaric. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like anybody else. I don't even know. Like I, she should have been with Klaus. And I know that you were in agreement with that. Mm-hmm. They just should have been together. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, what else? So oh, how- there's something I wanted to bring up. Yeah. <laughs> I was just going to ask you how you felt about Catherine's big return at the end. It was cool that she she was going to be the one to come back, but also I thought it was a bit of underwhelming, honestly, because the only big trick was the house explosion, but she made somebody else do that for her. I, I don't know. It was kind of strange. I think it worked. I just wish yeah. we hadn't gotten all the fake outs with um, Matt's mom and then Vicky. Because they were definitely yeah. faking us out with, oh, here's Catherine. Oh, no, it's just Melinda Clark. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, that was, yeah, that was definitely a huge fake out because I thought that was her silhouette. And when that was happening, what I thought was that she w- Nina wasn't going to come back to be Elena and they were just going to have the silhouette of someone that looked like her do stuff. I really thought they were going to do <laughs> But they didn't, which is good. But I really just was like, I could see that happening. (laughs) Yeah. No, but I am glad they brought her back. I just wish they had done it at least in the last five minutes instead of the reveal that it's Vicky (laughs) going to ring the bell. But it does make sense that Vicky came back because Catherine wouldn't be able to open the gates of hell without um, someone from that bloodline ringing it. Yes. Yeah. So luckily she was dead, I guess. So that that, that did kind of work out. Um, but that bell everything about this weird bell is so weird it, it makes sense it does but I don't know how they come up with this stuff there must be some type of a lore behind it a little bit um, you know with like sirens and a bell and like Satan and, and, mm-hmm. hell and all that stuff so I don't know um, but uh, wait I have to ask you this question 
<laughs> and tell me if you think that this was like some bullshit or not. But whenever, um, I think it's towards the end, whenever Stefan, when Stefan kills Cade in that moment, um, it's whenever Damon is like being pulled to Cade, but Bonnie is trying to pull Damon back and he's like hanging on the rock. And then there's like a, that I guess like that big elemental like explosion and then Damon said I think that elemental explosion blew me back into my body do you remember that moment yeah I was like what I was like okay I'll take it that's some bullshit <laughs> sometimes you have to bullshit Funny. things to figure it out because yeah. I didn't read the Game of Thrones that's books true. I didn't read, I haven't read Game yeah. of Thrones book series yet, yeah. but apparently the reason the last two books have not been written in 10 years is George yeah. Martin wrote himself into a knot that he can't untangle. Oh. <laughs> and so sometimes you just need to bullshit your way out of these situations. Yes. <laughs> and I, I just thought it was a funny moment because I was like, oh, okay. Okay. That's yeah. fine. If Damon's got to be alive, he's got to be alive, which is cool. Yeah, he has to be alive so they can bring back Elena and they can have their romantic ending where yeah. Damon's apparently fine being a human and they get married. And oh, wait, I have a question now. And I forgot to ask you this, but I did I miss this? I thought that Elena was still going to be a vampire. Is she not a vampire? No, anymore? She, remember, she took the cure at the end of season six. Oh, fuck. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, then um, Damon was going to take the cure by drinking her blood. Yeah and they were gonna live together. So she's not a vampire anymore. Yeah, okay, I gotcha. Sorry, there's another meow meow kitten in here. Um, but uh, yeah, so, okay, I, I guess it worked out, but I still, I just think that's such a, such a funny thing. It's just like that put me back in my body. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Um, I, I don't think I have any other questions. Uh, or anything lingering it, it did I'm glad it came to a close Thank I'm glad you. everyone had their conclusion you know everyone. yeah I think aside from Bonnie's whole bullshittery yeah. um yeah. I think everybody had the ending they deserved yes. uh I wish we got an actual Klaus appearance at the end but I like the letter yeah. he may he wrote because yeah. it does imply that he and Caroline may be together one day um uh, I did yeah. read up on this. Julie wow. Pleck, the showrunner, didn't want mm. them to be endgame at the end of either series because it would ruin the legacy of Stefan, which what? I just dis I disagree <laughs> with because I didn't buy like I liked Caroline as a Lexi replacement for Stefan. I don't yeah. think they worked as a couple because it really felt like just pairing people up so they have somebody. Yes, I absolutely agree. And it's, it was like, it, it was a struggle and it was so forced. It just mm -hmm. felt wrong, even yeah. just watching. Because yeah, I could absolutely friend. believe her as a Lexi, which yeah. Stefan does reunite with Lexi at the end. I know, yeah, that's like his very best friend. And I did get um, all sad because everybody like waited for the other person to arrive, you know, and, and die mm -hmm. <laughs> and meet them again. So that's, that's all very nice. But um, yeah, Caroline just should have been the best friend because they were best friends this whole time. So like, they can't just like, like flip it over and just say they're going to be a couple without that intense, like character interaction buildup that wasn't at all present with Caroline and stuff and like ever. Yeah, I think there was that <laughs> brief episode, the brief moments in the pilot episode where she had a crush on him, but he went for Elena instead, but. Oh, I like barely remember that. <laughs> so like there really wasn't a lot of romantic tension building between Caroline and Stefan to justify them getting married at the end. Because they really yeah. were just friends. And I really like that friendship because we don't see a lot of just guys and gals being pals. <laughs> yeah. Um, there was so much tension between her and Klaus. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. All he did was flirt with her constantly. Stefan is not very flirtatious. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So 
but it was just like yeah, whatever and Klaus and Caroline yeah. just work for me because a lot of people don't get why Klaus would be interested in Caroline. And I think it goes back to how pure she is. Even mm-hmm. as a vampire, she doesn't have bloodlust. Yeah. And she kept kind of that pure innocence she had as a human. Yeah. And I think that's what Klaus, why Klaus is interested in her. Yes. Because he doesn't have any of that. So they're an opposites attract type of situation. Yeah, where definitely. she could bring out the humanity in him. Seems like he does, like she does, because he like, you know, made a great donation to like the school and like he keeps his distance when she asks and he's actually very respectful of her. So I don't know what the problem is, Caroline, like, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, but so, yeah, I think overall, it's a satisfying conclusion to the series. <laughs> we do yeah. get the spinoff the originals and legacies originals aired uh, at the same time as the vampire diaries, more or less, Uh, give or take a couple of years. uh Um, But legacies is a direct follow-up to vampire diaries. So I guess we'll see what happens in that series when we get to it. Yeah. I was going to ask you how soon after the vampire diaries, the originals and the legacies came out. So yeah, I guess I didn't realize that originals was happening at the same time. Yeah. So I think originals started There was that episode in like season four, season five, Uh probably season four, where Uh it's just Klaus going to New Orleans. Yes. That was a backdoor pilot for the originals. Yes, yes. So after that, they aired in the same time frame. So there's probably going to be Vampire Diaries crossover with originals, I imagine. Oh, cool. That's interesting interesting but legacies Um, takes place 10 years after the end of the vampire diaries interesting that's cool that's good to know so looking at the originals now it looks like there's there's five seasons so not eight but still still a lot of seasons um and it looks like there are (laughs) 22 episodes girls (laughs) get ready I'm ready. Ready to watch half? Um, yeah. After we watch the Megan Fox movie, I'm ready. I mean, like, hey, let's do it. Yeah, I'm ready for more Klaus. Okay. I know. Me too. Like the one, and I'm ready for his brother too. You know, you know, I love him. Mm-hmm. Um, forgetting his name right now, but <laughs> he's my favorite. All right, fabulous. So, oh wait, Sam, I'm looking at this list on on like. Uh, the computer and it says related shows and it says the vampire diaries legacies and the awakening what's that the awakening yeah what is that let me look that up is there another spinoff maybe see the awakening is the first mm-hmm. book in the vampire diary series oh but it says similar shows so the awakening show mm. look at this Oh, I don't know what. Yeah, I don't know why it says The Awakening here in related shows. Maybe maybe, it's, maybe The Awakening is the Vampire Diaries maybe in like a different country. It has a different title or something. One of maybe. Those. Uh, we can maybe. research it for the next episode. For sure. Unless I, it looks like maybe. I have no idea. All right. Well, anyway forget it I just I just noticed that now so you can take a look into that a little bit but um cool so uh yeah I'm happy with the conclusion I'm very ready to move on to our new show um and I'm really excited to watch this new Megan Fox horror movie yeah um, it's it's probably going to be awesome she's actually fantastic to watch on the screen she's just uh, she just steals the show mm-hmm I don't think I have anything else to say. I, have, I can't think of any other points. I don't think I do either. Yeah, man. Um, so, uh, yeah, we can talk uh, a lot more about all the different stuff that's going on in our personal lives, maybe in the next episode or something. Um, but, uh, you know, other than that, 
I'm on spring break next week, so Woo-hoo. I have all the time in the world to watch the movie and watch the show. <laughs> so Sounds like a blast. All right, dude. Well, I will talk to you next week. Listeners, if you want to keep up with our conversation, watch Till Death on Netflix 2021. And we'll see you next time. Bye. All right. Bye-bye.